I see you have a collection of Scottish films behind you. I do, because it's like... I mean, I was born in Scotland, that's no secret, it's obviously to you, but to other people they may not know. (laughs) Um, somebody thought I was from Bristol the other week. It's like I don't even get how you get Bristol from my weird mongrel accent. But mm. um, I remember growing up in Scotland, and it didn't feel like Scotland made too many movies. I mean, I was, I'm obviously going back to like early '80s when I was conscious that films were a thing and stuff. I think we were the local hero then. There was local hero, Gregory's and there was Gregory's Greg? girl. And then I remember getting stupidly excited when I'm sitting in a cinema when I was 13 years old and the trailer came on for Restless Natives with the big country soundtrack and, you know, uh, hijacking tourist buses and stuff like that. And that is a very sort of conscious memory of, wow, this is a Scottish movie, that'll be amazing because the country that I live in, I could see myself on screen. This is like, wow, this is amazing. Um, because we both grew up in a time where, and we still do, where predominantly films are American. You know, 90% of the stuff that is out there is probably yeah. US. The British film industry in general, I think, has picked up a lot over the years. Uh, it's still nowhere near the US, but it's better than it was because it used to be that British films were just all period dramas. There was a time when it was like, you know, your Pride and Prejudices and your Howard's End and your passage to india and gandhi and all these sort of things with that's and i had no interest in that i was more into like star wars and mm-hmm. the Beastmaster and all that sort of stuff and highlander and whatnot um and so i don't remember that many scottish films being out then when you mentioned that we we're going to do a podcast about scottish films oh, i'm like oh let me think of which ones there are. And then the list just kept going and it kept going and it kept going and some were in there, but it's like, no, you're not going to, you're not on that list, get out. So it's quite a, it was a tricky thing, but I've got a big list. There you go. That's my list. I'm not going to show you what though. There seemed to be a while there Mm. where it was only Ken Loach making films. Ken Loach, Mike Lee. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. Uh, And, as it, and then as it came on a little bit, when it was Scottish Green, not Creative Scotland, same name, different name, same nonsense. Mm-hmm. And um, it's true. I don't care anymore. They're not going to fund me. And um, it seemed that we were only allowed to make one film every couple of years. Mm-hmm. Like, they didn't seem to be funding for it. And they were making films like Ned's, which I guess you... I love make. Ned's. Really? I hadn't I really... It. I watched... And the thing is, it's like, and I'm going to ask you what the identity of Scottish film is. That's going to be a question that's going to, that I'm going to fire you away at some point. Because when I was putting this list together, I'm like, I don't want it to be filmed, filled with films that involve drunken bar fights, people getting headbutted, people carrying machetes going, yeah, bastard, and trying to trying to slash. But there is a lot of those in the it's, same way there's a lot of Cockney gang, gangster films in, yeah. in England. But I don't want the Scottish identity of movies to be that. No, it's not far off. Really? Because Is that still the same, do you think? Yeah, because you had Red Road, and that was supposed to be a trilogy, and I don't know if that actually came to be. Um, but for every Red Road, Ned's... Uh, Sense, Sense of Freedom, Debt yeah. Collector, My Name is Joe, Small Faces, I've got a lot of these. They're, uh, you know, so, uh, the, Train what, Spotting to a certain extent. What was, what was Martin Compson's first one? That was the football. Uh, Sweet Sixteen. He did. 16. So for every for every ten of them, you get the occasional Anna and the Apocalypse. Yeah. Which I've not seen because I'm a terrible person. I've got beef with the director. <laughs> he, doesn't, <laughs> okay. he doesn't remember our beef, but we've got beef. You know the beef. That's the main. Thing. I'm aware of the beef. He knew the beef. He's just two faced. But. Um, if you want us to have a chat with me in a coffee and we can talk it through and then maybe we'll be sound as a pound. So, so, <laughs> uh, watching this. And, uh, so occasionally we get an Anna and the Apocalypse and occasionally we get a Lost at Christmas. Um, and occasionally, oh, I guess that's it. I mean, I feel that Trainspotting 2 wasn't similar in tone to Trainspotting. No, but I even, love train spotting too. Even even train spotting, which is about drug abuse and navigating your life in the system, I feel yeah. that there was a relatively upbeat message behind it, yeah. and I feel that train spotting too elevated that. Yeah, 
because it wasn't about the drugs so much no. anymore. It was about being in your 40s and surviving, but there was an optimism to it. And I think Trainspotting 1 and 2 are perfect. Um, Angel Share, absolutely. I have it. I've never I've seen, seen it. it. I've never watched it, though. It's it's, it's, it's on my it's shelf. And... It's, it's upbeat. I like it. And then you've got Sunshine on Leaf, which I think is our second only musical in Scotland, which is a damn shame. And unfortunately, the actor, one of the actors is now in prison um, for alleged sexual assault. So that's kind of a damper on the film. A little bit, yeah. But I love that film. It's 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 a perfect film. Uh, directed by Dexter Fletcher, when it did Sunshine on Leaf. Yeah, yeah. I was like, press gang, press gang. So for every orphan, you've got looking after Jojo on there, but that wasn't a, that that was more TV show than film. But it's yes, fine. it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we get Dog Soldiers. Yeah, see, Dog Soldiers, it's Stu Miller that suggested Dog Soldiers, and I'm like, well, I know it was made by an English director, but that's fine, because, yeah. like, so was Shallow Grave and Trainspotting and stuff. But I always thought that was filmed in Wales for some reason, so I'm like, right, I'm going to take Stu Miller down, because I always try to take him down, because he's too cocky, that guy. Uh, and you may listen, he may not, I don't care. Stu, cocky it. And it was filmed in Scotland, so I'm like, I guess Stu Miller can remain another day. But, uh, but yeah, Dog Soldiers, set in Scotland. but There was, a, there was another one... It was up here. It's like a zombie horror film, and Rona Mitri's in it. Martin Compson's Doomsday. in it. Doomsday, yeah, Doomsday, yeah. Where they Great merge. Film. There are two Glas- so Glasgow Central and Glasgow Queen Street. They just made a weird amalgamation of them. This is neither one or the other. <laughs> but we don't. There is such a cultural cringe here in Scotland, where we don't like hearing our own voices. We don't like seeing ourselves. We don't like that representation. There's plenty of like documentaries and like reality shows. So on like BBC Scotland, you've got uh, Inside Central Station, which is a, a documentary about Central Station, Glasgow Central Station. And it's on like season four or five and it's hugely popular. And then you've got the agency, which is about an acting agency in Scotland. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <Uh-oh>. <laughs> but it's just got its second season. So... But when it comes to anything genre, sci-fi, fantasy, fairy tale, superhero, not a chance. And when we made Night is Day, we were and still are Scotland's only superhero TV show movie um, that's out there. Uh, there's a there's Beasts of War, which is by a black writer in Scotland and I think that might be close that sh- that if it's not being made it should be made into a movie or a TV show but when we were making Night is Day the movie with no money Mark Miller was also making Miracle Park mm-hmm. with a lot of friends of mine that I knew and and he fucked it <laughs> oh no <laughs> and he felt fil- he filmed half of it and then just stopped And I remember sitting, at, I remember sitting at a meeting at the Glasgow Film Festival, and they're like, "Oh, we're doing a whole comic strand because Mark Miller's going to premiere his movie here in 2012." And I was like, "I said to them, but he's not because he's not even finished it." No, 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 he's going to show a rough cut of it. I'm like, he's not, but okay. And they're like, "Well, we we would like to have Night's Day, but only if it's a premiere." And I was like, "Yeah, okay, cool, fine." And we were the only superhero movie from Scotland to win it. Like, <laughs> But the press pitted us against each other. Yeah, so the press, the press do, don't they? The and I messaged, the, and I messaged Mark, and I went, I've no idea what the press are doing. And he goes, he went, no, me neither. He said, I, I don't care. I went, no, I don't care either. It's like the media and film fans can be the enemy of the film industry. This this product that they claim to love, they can take it down, and it's it's very infuriating. It's a conversation you have, I, you and I have had many times. It's just like. Where's it? just be supportive. It's not hard. No, it's not but, hard. At all. But, but for every, I mean, the reason I love Ned's, and I, I've not seen it for a few years, but that is, cause I remember growing up in Scotland as a kid. I I got out when I was five. fifteen, so five more Edinburgh side, and to me, it's like watching Ned's. I'm like, that's I don't know where Ned's was set, but it's like that was I saw a lot of that going on. I'm gonna, back, I'm gonna back guess, when I was a kid. I'm going to guess Glasgow. 
you know, I, I saw the crazy people and the, the wannabe gangsters and the, this violence breaking out from nowhere. Thankfully, not too close to me, but close enough that it was, I knew to stay away from it. Yeah, so that it's, was... Yeah, it's Glass, it's it's Glasgow. Glasgow. Yeah, so 1970s. But, you, yeah. But, but, but yeah, that's very much about... See, I, I was put off by it immediately because I, I was beat up by Neds in school. So yeah. being a geeky kid who loved movies. So... Mm. And it was high school that made me want to make movies because they, they brought like the Braveheart team to our school to talk about working in film. And I went, like a meerkat. But how old, so how old were you then? When, 15, when, I would have been 15. So you're 15, you've never made anything in your you know, film-wise, and yet years later you end up working with Vary, who was in Braveheart. Does that, not, kind of, does that not make you think, that's just weird? Uh, yeah. Good weird. It's like, that's very surreal. Yeah, and I love Barry to bits. I don't know what she's doing now. I know she that... has, um, she's just finished Fear the Invisible Man, which is out, which is really, really good. So I would recommend <laughs> watching that. But I know I had Barry on my podcast probably, it was sometime last year. We had a Zoom call with me, with herself and the director of the film, Paul. And it was like, it was great to catch up with Barry again. And that's because of you, because well, I spoke came... to Barry because she was working with you way back when. Yeah, or, the pilot of Bloodline. Yeah. Which. If we made Bloodline now, I would have I would have got Bloodline made. Mm. It wouldn't have just been a pilot that we did, it would have got made. Um, but I put it in the hands of other people, and I think it made. And I fell out of the co-writer on it. You know, probably oh. Just ego. Just ego but yeah, for, for every... But for, uh, every for, for every Neds and, and small faces and sense of freedom and stuff, you've got films, and I was looking through lists of the best Scottish films, and it's like, you've got a lot of crackers there that aren't Gangster film, Rat Catcher. Great film. Amazing film. It still upsets me, the mouse and the balloon. That's the, every time I see that scene, it's just like... Is that the one that's got... It's... Um, the, I've, forgotten it? the, I've forgotten the name. Miles. It's really awful. If it's Sophia Miles, we'll, um, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, it's a few years. 19, it's like early, early, yeah, that's the one. Set in Glasgow. Uh, doesn't see who's in it. No, but that's a that's a cracking film. I thought there's... Sophia Miles was in that. Maybe I'm not. Oh no, what am I thinking of? Uh... Oh, but yeah, Rat Catcher is another great film. There, a lot of these. I'm noticing a trend with Rat Catcher, Neds, etc. They're all set in the 1970s. Why do you think that is? Though I mean, obviously we're living in nostalgia driven. I mean, that was 99 Rat Catcher, so we can't really say it's the nostalgia thing of nowadays. But I think. 1970s Glasgow was kind of fantasized, maybe fetishized, as like the industrial era where Glasgow was at its height. It's probably the same as watching films that are set in 1970s New York. Yeah. You know, I think Glasgow back in the 70s and early 80s was a different place than it is now. Billy uh, Conley um, describes Glasgow in the 70s, 80s as kind of like a charcoal grey. <laughs> Everything great. and that would be because of the mining, that would yeah. be because of the shipyards, that would be because of the industry that you know, the you know the steam and the paddle uh, in the paddle boats. And he says, but when but now when he comes to Glasgow, and this was a while ago. This was when he was on the Craig Ferguson show. So this is like two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand ten, or whatever. And uh, he says now like they just switch the light on, and everything's kind of like rainbows and kaleidoscopes and. Yeah, just a bit brighter, but like, which is a lot of film, a lot of films that are genre are are shot here. The Flash was done here, and Batgirl was well, done here. Some of the Fast and the Furious series Fast has been done there. Six was shot here. Uh, yeah. I know Hobbs and Shaw bits were filmed here. Like, we doubled for London at some point. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are filming stuff here. Um, the Batman was shot here, famously. Yep. Nice. Uh, the third Nolan Batman film was shot here. Um, but I don't know why uh, the, the Avengers Endgame and Infinity War were shot here, like a whole section in Edinburgh, which was great to see Waverly Station, where I met my wife, mm-hmm. uh, Captain America and, and Black Widow and Falcon fighting off against the aliens. But um, we don't make our own, we don't do that. We don't. Like we're just poo pooed upon. I I remember being like twenty years old, and I was meeting all these filmmakers and producers and whatever. And I said I was meeting them week in week out, and going, 
I'm going to make Scotland's first superhero web series and I'm going to get it out once a week. I didn't get it out once a week, but I got out 13 episodes that I planned to do. And every single one of them said, no, it's not going to happen. So Did you give a reason why, though? Because oh, just no one, no one will watch it. Uh, you won't find people to work on it. You won't find the money. You know, the, the usual. And I went to Scotch Green. They didn't want anything to do with it. Kelf Supreme. And you know, but I was on, I was on Radio Scotland doing interviews for it. Um, and people watched it. We were in the news. We had a premiere, uh, two screenings that went down quite well. And and it definitely launched my career. But it's just an cops and monsters again genre, but a drama. It's set in a real world that just happens to be inhabited by vampires, werewolves, and zombies. But it's about real people, and uh, and that's done really well. And you know it's done well because the, the the attention we got at Comic Con and stuff. Mm-hmm. But people still don't take it seriously. And I sat with a producer at BBC Scotland who went, "We should be doing cops and monsters." Yes, you should. It's like, so said, why aren't you? And he says, we should be giving you 60 grand to go do 10 six minute episodes and then pay you another 10 grand to do a 60 minute version of it, like to do an edit of it. I went, yeah, you should. He goes, because you're doing well at all these Comic Cons, you've got all these writers involved, you've got all these great actors involved, we should be doing it. Go speak to the head of Digital Commissioning and tell tell them that I want it and we'll get the ball rolling. And I emailed the head of commission, Digital Commissioning and I said, right, I've spoken to such and such and he wants it. And she said, no, well, I don't want it, so thanks, bye. Did you not then go back to the other person going, yeah, tried that? Didn't yeah, worry, don't want it. Any of it, yeah, my hands are tied. So what's what's the solution to that? I mean, I think the solution would be to go around, if Scotland wants support, go, go, Scottish go, filmmaker, you've got to go elsewhere, haven't you? To go, to go around it, like, to just absolutely, to, to stop trying to get Scottish projects that the rest of the world want to watch. Because you're not going to get huge numbers on Ned. You're not going to get huge, you're not going to get Marvel or Disney or DC style numbers. Mm. Even a fraction of those numbers in a Scottish production would would be amazing. Because what's what's the Sydney Sweeney one sitting at? Uh, not sure. Uh, Sydney Sweeney. Is it no one but you? I will oh. take your words. It's not not a film that's on my radar at the minute. No, it's not right. But my point, and, and, but but my point is, um, that's getting huge amount of press. Yeah. Um, so it beat Shazam two and Blue, Blue Beetle at the box office. This rom con, rom con, mm-hmm. with a what's his name? Uh, he was Glenn Powell. Yeah. Was, uh, oh, it's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and it's got Sydney Sweeney, and she is having a moment, mm-hmm. good or bad, because <laughs> she's on Madam Web, which I'm going to watch when it comes. Yeah, up. I think it looks fun, but you know, I read the reviews. I can see where it went wrong. It doesn't matter. But my point is, it, you don't need to have a, a Marvel movie to be making that sort of money. And there's no way a rom com that that costs 189 million. No, no chance. To make it maybe 50, right? Yeah. So no wonder they're like, we're going to do a sequel. <laughs> right. But my point is like we don't we don't do rom coms like that down here. We don't do superhero films like that down here, up here even. So I think our only answer is to go to Canada, America, Australia, New Zealand. People yeah. who want to see Scotland shown in a different light, but want to embrace the culture. But you've so you've got these organizations and it's sort of distribution companies and production companies in Scotland whose job it is to make films and make money and make more films and so on. Mm-hmm. It sounds like they're turning around to a lot of the things going, yeah, we don't want to do. What are they doing? What are they, they, they must be making something. What are they actually making? Yeah. Cause if, they're, if they're not making anything, then they need to be out the office and me and you will go sit in the office and go, all right, let's make some stuff. Um, well, here's the output for 2021, 2022. Here's a review, an annual review. Yeah. Um, what did you do? What did you actually do? It's a lot of waffle. <laughs> it's a lot of numbers. The annual review. So they gave 8.3 million to culture organisations and venue recovery fund. 
Uh, they gave 8.9 million to performing arts venue relief fund, 4 million to culture collective, 3 million to COVID-19 cancellation funds for freelancers. I was a bit of that. Yeah. 13.1 million on COVID cancellation fund for cultural organisations, hardship fund 7.5. I was part of that. Recovery fund for independent cinema 3.2. But but they're not they're not making any films. But then they're not going to generate any money then, are they? No. And I, I, I have knocked on that door for about 10 years on my own and with people that should unlock that door and I still get that door shut in my face. And when, I went, to, when I went to Short Circuit, so Short Circuit did a thing of first features, which hilariously I was eligible for, even though I already had a feature film. And I wrote a pitch at a pitch deck at a... Uh, Pinterest board, all the stuff, and I sent them in my application because they say that it's not our, we won't help you make the film, we're only going to give you 10 grand to write the film. It's to give you the money to take time to go write a film. You need to find the people that are going to make it. And I said, I've got an Australian production company who will green light this based on the 10 grand that you give me to go write the film. And they're like, we like your idea, but we're, only, but we're looking for exceptional ideas. And it's like I literally had a production company who was going to make it, and they are still going to make it, but without the ten grand in my pocket. So even then, it's like, well, what does exceptional mean? Yeah, exceptional and, to you might be different. Exceptional to me, and ex- exceptional to Siobhan, for example, might be different to our answers. So it's like such went, a vague. And thing. I went back to them and I said, right, in order to help further and and improve my career, what 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 are you looking for? And I never got a reply. <laughs> they don't help themselves, do they? No, because it's a stock answer. And then when I went yeah. to short circuit again for Faithful and they were offering twenty grand, they they turned me down. I didn't even get to the application process because my director was lived in England. And it's like and they said and they said we were supporting Scottish creatives. I said, Yeah, ninety percent of us are Scottish. You're ruling out visual effects artists who live any other part of the world. You're ruling out sound designers, composers, visual effects post trailers editors whatever who can all do these jobs remotely you are ruling them out because of this or come back if you if you get a scottish director come back it's like well i'm not i'm not firing my like, my director because he's english because oh, it's english you start right? that whole thing again no. and 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 it's funny because they've got a whole day of talks at the glasgow film festival on the wednesday guess where i'm going mm. <laughs> And I'm going to say to them, you are being detrimental to the progress of Scottish talent. Yeah. And I and I, and I and I want to hear from you why you think it's acceptable to rule people out just because they don't live in Scotland. When I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure you won't get an answer. You won't get an answer where yeah. you go, actually, I now understand the point, and I'm happy. You'll get a political answer, yeah, which yeah. will, you know, waffle. Yeah, it'll be waffle. But yeah. just, I, I spoke to a great guy, so a great guy called John from Mortimer is like an animation producer and he told me a horrible story where an award, you know, award-winning award filmmaking team wanted to make a short film in Scotland and, and they said to Creative Scotland, can we get any money? And they said, no, but we want you to put our logo on your film anyway. And he's like, well, you're not going <laughs> to any money. And he goes, yeah, but you're never going to get any money off us if you don't put your logo on the film. Wow, I, b- I believe that's a blackmail thing, isn't it? Is it blackmail or extortion? I keep I getting those mixed up. Yeah. I believe that's math <laughs> yeah, a little bit. And so he started leaving Scotland off of his pitches. He's like, it, it's Celtic, so it could be Irish right. or Welsh. And that's why the origins of the Layock animated series is now called Celtic Warriors. Because if you were to call it Scottish Warriors, you would just, it'd be I, hinder, hindering itself. Yeah. But you do get the occasional great Scottish film like Barney Thompson, The Legend of Barney Oh, Thompson. I love that movie. Weird, weird movie, but yeah, I love it. But even Rob, even Robert Carlyle left Scotland because he got fed yeah. up with nothing getting made. Yeah, and he's Robert Carlyle. He's been a name for a long time. Is he made a he made a film, and he said that, and, and it was like a. It's funny because the plot was so similar to like a film I wrote, and he said he said no one saw it. Nobody which one? Saw it. Which one was it? <sighs> I know a quite quite a lot of uh, Robert Carlyle films. It's, it, it's called This Something, um, but that could be anything. Hold on. Yeah, This Something. That narrows it down. That's good. The Tournament. 
Yeah, so, I yeah, I've seen that. A tournament is watched by a dozen of wealthy men betting on which of the thirty assassins will survive the next yeah, yeah. twenty four hours color die. That's it really takes, a, Craig Conway's in that as well. So that's, when, that's Rames, when it showed up on my radar. It's a good film. Ring, Ring Rames and Kelly Hugh. Mm. So Robert, yeah. I've seen it. But gotcha. he said no one watched it, so that was him he was out. So he went off to America and he did um uh, Once Upon a Time. Oh, that's where he's yeah, in Stargate and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. He toddled off and did like a Stargate spin off and stuff. Yeah. So our our talent is leaving true yeah. and ass. And the, and yes, the BAFTAs were great. It's nice to celebrate the wins and it's nice to celebrate the industry. And I don't care for what that person said. <laughs> like, I don't because that that's that's an aimless attack. Mm. And but the numbers are real. Like the producers yeah. that worked on those films are earning less than twenty five thousand pound a year. Yeah. Um, and some of them are making fifteen thousand pound a year. It's not a just and that's not BAFTA's fault. It's not BAFTA's job to fund it. Um it's BAFTA's job to fund some projects and the BFI, etc. But it's not their job it's not their job to give you a job. But there needs they need to fight for the the UK as a whole need to fight not, not just Scotland, they need to fight for the UK film and TV industry. I think also people, and I used to be guilty of that, and I'm talking like beyond 15 years ago, is I had no interest in watching British films because I'm like, they're all period dramas. And they were at one point. I'm like, I don't want to watch them. And then I started to see films like Hard Men and Shallow Grave and, and then Lock Stock and Shopping. That was like a huge thing for me. And I'm like, do you know what? These British films are actually quite good. I need to pay attention to more of these. And then I discovered so many gems. But yeah. I think a lot of people out there who watch films, if it's not Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, or some huge behemoth blockbuster, they don't watch it. No. And if they do watch something that's smaller, it's always on a streaming platform. So there's no real money going, there's not enough money going back to the filmmakers for but stuff then, like that. But then you've got your Chris Nolans, who started off here. Yeah. Because he did a couple here and then he went straight on to Memento. Yeah. And then he was straight onto that, and then Batman, and then he flew away. So he, even he was like, "Well, I'm off." Yeah, Ridley uh, Scott again. Ridley you know, Scott did a few, yeah. and then he's off. And you, I can understand why they're off. Yeah. But the fact is, you, they should be doing more to keep them here. And Matthew Vaughn, same. Yeah. yeah. Even though Argyle has underperformed, but again, your films are too expensive, and they'll do fine on streaming. And like, it's the and it's the idiots online that go, "This yeah. looks terrible," and whinging about it, and then. Silly people going, well, I, w- I won't watch it because somebody who I don't know said it was terrible. Again, I watch. I'll watch when it hits streaming. Like Same. my 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 time, like my next two cinema trips will be the date of my birthday and the second of March. So I'm going to go see Lisa Frankenstein because yeah. I want to support it. And then mm-hmm. after that, will be Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire on the 30th of March. And then after that, who knows? Yeah, because we just don't have time. So I watch. We watch things at home. Like we're going to watch the holdovers. Yeah. We watched. Uh, Hunger Games, Songbirds and Snakes. Yeah, and loved it. Yeah. So and anyway, um, you're right. There needs to be an initiative to keep people here because there is a. We warned people about this five years ago, that if they didn't do more to keep people here and give them work and training and money, like a basic universal income, get people off benefits and get everyone on, like get everyone on basic universal income. Which, if the Top ten percent and the oil companies and everyone who doesn't pay tax all started paying their taxes. We could afford universal basic income, but they don't want to share the, the wealth. Fine, no. but, but I said if you don't keep them here, there's going to be a, a a gap. There's going to be a vacuum of talent because everyone will leave or quit. Yep. And and people are quitting. People are going Yeah, I, I see a lot of that on my Facebook page where and it's not just you know, it's not specifically just Scotland, it's like because I am in England and people are like, I can't do it anymore, I'm off, I'm out, I'm done. I've put yeah. so many years in and I'm going away. And I, I understand that. It's a shame to see, but I get it because I'm a, I'm amazed you know. I'm still here. Really? <laughs> yeah, oh god, yeah. Yeah, but you've you've um adapted with the change. I mean, I've go back ten parts. years. You go back ten years. You were Fraser Cole director, and now you're Fraser Cole producer, writer. Yeah, you, all these different things. So that's where your but I've, success but I've comes had, from. 
But I've had so much more success with an Australian producer who has physically put hand, money in my hand and said, go write a script. Yeah. And I'll take it on my slate and we'll get it made. Why did it take Australia to do that? <laughs> That's the million... And then D- Australian dollar question, isn't it? And then there's an American producer who's worked on The Matrix and Peter Rabbit and works on Come Out of the Tower, and he's like, right, I want to do an initiative in Scotland. I like Origins. I'm going to, I can't promise you I'm going to get Origins made, but I'm going to certainly help you get as close as I can. So why is it taking an American and an Australian and not the, the wealth of Scottish talent, like producers here? Because I remember, again, back to the BBC, after the, the, the Cops and Monsters pilot, because we only had what, that one episode for so long, and it got quite a bit of buzz about it, and a producer at the BBC, she was like, oh, you, do, you did that Cops and the Cops and the Monsters, yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah, 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 we should have a chat about that. And I was like, cool. I know this is supposed to be about Scottish film, but it is relevant, I promise you. Yeah, of course, of course it is, yeah. And uh, so I met with her, and she went, well, my first question is, why didn't you bring it to the BBC? And I went, because you can't. She said, what do you mean you can't? I said, there's no way in, to, there's no way I can knock on the BBC door tomorrow and say, hi, I've got a script, make it. We, we have to go through the writer's room and I've never got into the writer's room. And she was like, right, okay, interesting, interesting. So she was, so she, she said, well, she goes, well, we should have been making it. So first of all, I apologise. Um, we should have been looking after you. Um, you there's more, you're, doing more, you're doing more than the majority of the people in this building have ever done. So I apologise. You're on our radar, we'll look after you. How would you feel about doing a pilot on BBC Three for Cops and Monsters? I was like, yeah, amazing. And she's like, no promises, but we'll, how would you feel about writing it for someone else? I was like, yeah, not a problem. And how would you feel if we have to recast people? Not a problem. Like, I get it, it's the gig. Mm-hmm. Um, which is like, okay, we'll keep the dialogue going and we'll, make, we'll try and make that happen. Two years later, and it didn't happen. So it's just, you're just led down the path of these false promises. And speak the, the again, my only success at the BBC is from BBC Alba, the Gaelic channel. And it's because I went in with my Australian producer and through that we got a letter of interest, which should have unlocked money with Creative Scotland, but didn't. And the letter of interest says, we're BBC Alba, we back this project and we, we support development funded from Creative Scotland. And we still didn't get the money from Creative Scotland, despite having the letter of interest. The BBC said, we're interested in this project, should it get made? we'll broadcast it i mean you do hear a lot of stuff if you look at the biggest films in the world your your con you know contact and all this sort of stuff you look at forrest gump for example you look what year that came out and what year it was started first you're talking decades in mm-hmm. in some cases however that was back then and and this is now you'd, you'd think it would be a little bit more organized but it's not the whole, but it doesn't seem to be but I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I don't know how many more times I personally can go to film festivals and film markets and TV festivals and go. Because every, every year I'm adding another substantial credit to what I'm doing and I'm making substantial contacts and still I can't unlock anything in this country. And we're at the point now where like, we just went to New Zealand. Yeah. So I, I understand that people are leaving and chucking it because I'm trying to crew but faithful and we're paying and we've had to crowdfund every part of that and I and I said that we're paying national minimum wage and we're trying to get some crew and we're getting nowhere we're getting somewhere but so, nobody, so, so what is the biggest let's talk about crew at the minute what do you mean you're getting nowhere no, so give, no, give no, it, no applications nobody's applying no one's I'm getting one or two people who aren't right for the job right and then we and then someone will email me it happened two days ago. Somebody emailed me and he's like, I've, done, I've worked for Disney and this and that and that. And I said, like, cool, it's national minimum wage. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, I can't do it for national minimum wage. And I'm like, well, well, whatever you read it, <laughs> it said it's national minimum wage. And you didn't read. So there is this thing. It's like, I, you know, we've, we've chatted on an episode of your show about my publicity angle. Yes. So I don't do this for, I don't do the publicity thing for a living. You know, there's no paycheck. I don't have a minimum rate or whatever. I'll do what I do because I enjoy it. If somebody then contacts me going, I like to do an article, but it's going to be national minimum wage. I do know somebody who'd be like, no, it needs to be more than that. You need to be. And I remember having the same conversation when it was my publicity thing. They were like, no, you need to be charging that this amount, this amount up here. And I'm like, yeah, but I don't make any amount. So surely if I'm in the middle of where you think it should be and nothing, 
that's good. No, 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 because no, you're right. And I get the whole, you don't want to undervalue yourself. Totally. But money's better than no money. And as long as you're hitting the legal limits, like yes. national minimum wage, I don't, what, is this person not working? Or is this yes. person going, do you know what? I'm not going to do your gig for national minimum wage because I'm really hoping that I'll get a phone call and it'll be like 10 times the national yes, minimum wage. And, That's just crazy logic, yes. wasn't it? Yeah. And I feel and I feel that some, sometimes you think you're better just offer them no money because yeah. I think they may be more offended at national minimum wage. And the, 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 true, yeah, no. the government the government have said here is the minimum of money you can pay people and I'm like, great, I can pay that. It goes up in April. Mm. We're gonna film it in March. But it's it's just madness. And like we're getting some people, but it's it's students that are upcoming. Yeah. And that's fine, but it, it but it might mean more work in post. Yeah, it might. Yeah. It's like handing somebody a camera going, I get that you're enthusiastic about this thing, but can you actually do it? Yeah. So it's, it, but there is just a, an exodus of talent. And I've not, I don't look for TV work anymore because I, because I, because Siobhan works first, first of Friday and I work from home Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And by working from home, that's not me earning money. That's me writing scripts or putting out the feelers or having meetings about faithful and whatever else. Occasionally it's a job. And it's an edit or it's a wedding or whatever. But that's not every day of the week. That's not every week. That's not every month. So I'm not, I'm nowhere at the top end. But I do it because I believe that there, there's a potential solution here that I'm just not quite cracked. But there's no, there's just no work. Everyone I've spoken to who works in the industry, there's just no work here. Nothing. Or it's thin. And if it's thin and, and little, they've already got all the people that they want on it anyway. And it's, yeah, it's coming up with a solution that's the the tricky thing. And the thing is, I think the film world and the TV world is very different nowadays. We've got people who will watch a film, but they don't want to pay for it. I'll oh. just, you know, the piracy is insane because it's all digital and stuff. Um, the first question when you mention, I watched this film is, is what, what platforms are on? If you go, you can actually can rent it for three quid on video on demand. You're like, oh, no, I'm not paying that. They just, it's the mentality of, film fans which i think is a hindrance and the films that are on amazon and netflix so i'll take amazon as an example you're you're earning like 0.0001 pence for every 60 minutes of people watching it if they're not paying 3.99 and that 3.99 is divvied up between what amazon is going to take off what your distributor is going to take off it and then you get 50p at the end of it yep and you need a lot of 50ps to be able to make another film yep and there's uh, your man Neil Johnson made his film available free to watch and he made a decent amount of money well he did and it was interesting with the views on Neil's film because he he wanted to do it as an experiment just to go I'm going to put it on YouTube and it was already on 33,000 views on his YouTube channel anyway and he put it on for free it's still on there at the minute so go watch Rogue Warrior Robot Fighter hopefully it will still be on if you you know if you go see it now um, and he was at the last count 119,000 views, and that's probably gone up because that was yesterday when I checked. So it's gone up like 90,000 views in about 10 days. And yet he's making a little bit of money off the YouTube revenue, but it's certainly not the money that people would have made by putting a video, you know, movie straight to DVD or cinema tickets or video on demand or something like that but he's got the same imdb reviews as me <laughs> does he <laughs> uh you type in rogue warrior robot fighter youtube and the film is not coming up there's a making of documentary there's a trailer there's a trailer there's you yeah. <laughs> there's me soundtrack. i come up uh well i, I will bring it up on my phone because it's, it's in my history you want immediate link to watch it all it is. Uh, oh, let's skip the ads. Got to love the ads on YouTube. Or perhaps that's interviews. It is currently on one hundred and twenty-seven thousand views. Uh, probably about ten days in. Nice. From from being made free. So I mean, I'm so it's Neil's thing what the revenue is, but I suspect it's not as much as it would have been had that been on at the cinema and lots of people went to see it. But it's still, 
It's been an interesting experiment. I'm sure Neil will sort of nod and go, it has been interesting. Yeah, I've got 127,000 views on here. Yeah. And it's a good film. I enjoyed it. It's great. I love my old sci-fi film. I don't understand a lot of the mythology that Neil sometimes puts into his sci-fi movies because it's, you know, it's way beyond the, the intellect of a Star Wars. But he's awesome with spaceships. His cast are great, and so it's all, I'll always support his stuff. But but there, but there are people out there who are making films. Some of it great, some of it not so great. But yeah. but I would much rather people go and make films and learn how to do it and get better. Because you make a film, you make mistakes. Yeah, you learn from those mistakes. You make another film, TV show, whatever. You make new mistakes. It's over and so forth. Yeah, but there's nowhere to go. There's no, no nowhere to go in what sense? Nowhere to to. No, there's no, there's no. You're not going to make a film and put it up on YouTube tomorrow, and a production company or a producer or a broadcaster or a streamer is going to go. Sweet, here's a five movie deal. Yeah. Or here's a contract. Or here's here's some money. Go make a new film. It's a bit like I was listening to the Film Stories podcast this week, and they did an episode on the Fantastic Four, the Josh Trank one. Mm-hmm. And they would say, you know, Chronicle is an amazing film if you've not seen Chronicle. And that was a tiny okay. little film. One of my Josh, films. Josh Trank just made it. He's like, I was going to make a movie. He made it. Uh, Fox went, oh, my God, that's amazing. Come over here and make a Fantastic Four film. I think, like you said, those days just don't seem to be a thing anymore. Not that I know of. And he went and made the Fantastic Four film, and they didn't. He, he came from an indie film background where he could do whatever he wanted. And, yep. he set, and then he stepped into a fox world of executives and money men and marketing and advertising who watered down his film, took the film away from him mm-hmm. and put out the terrible reshoot. A and subpar I, film, yeah. I've never seen it because I didn't, I just didn't. Do you know what? It's not that bad. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't fancy. I like the old, the old like 2000 ones. Yeah, Tim and, Story ones. Because yeah. they're fun. Um, and I'm excited for the, the 1963 one that they've got coming out in 2025, um, but it got but it got stamped on and ruined, and all creativity got taken off them. And I think the same maybe happened to uh, the guy who did Rogue One. Yeah, Gareth Edwards. Edwards. I always get Evans and Edwards mixed up their surnames, but yeah. who did the yeah. raid? Gareth Edwards did monster again. He did monsters. He did with not a lot of money, and then he got Rogue One. Yeah, and. Then Lucas came down on him and did their magic, mm-hmm. and, and rather than go just whatever, they just go, oh, well, they were just awkward and difficult to work with, and the PR machine just pumps out rubbish about how difficult they were. And then um, the director of Dying, uh, No Time to Die also had a whole lot of crap thrown yeah. his way when they were making that, for, oh, he's, he's He's holding back production because he's busy playing video games. Like, I'm pretty sure he's not. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he's not either, no. So it's 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 creatives versus the money people. I think yeah, and it's like obviously there is a place for accountants to be in something like Creative Scotland. They're you know they're an important part. They are needed. Otherwise, it's like oh, oh we spent all the money. How are we going to pay wages? But I think there also there needs to be a balance of accountants versus creative filmmakers in that thing. And you see a lot of that with the studios. I mean, you look at Warner Brothers for example. That is run by a businessman. That is run by Zaslov, bad, who's bad, like bad businessman. Bad businessman who's like, oh, let's look at the money. Well, we can get rid of the Acme film. We can get rid of Batgirl. Salem's Lot's looking a bit iffy, if I'm being honest, because that's been long delayed. And it's like, just release it. I don't know. And that's a Warner Brothers film. So it's the same with like Paramount seems to be in trouble all of a sudden too. Yeah. Out of nowhere. This will, so the thing with Paramount is I think they will fold their streaming platform into something else. And they, because a lot of the studios have spent so much money on these streaming platforms and it's just not brought money back in. No, because it really hasn't. Because there's, because there's too many. That no, nobody can afford all of them. No. Bye-bye Britbox. Just bye saying. Bye Britbox. Um, Net, Netflix is going to have to start charging like Twenty-two pound a month standard, yeah, to make back the debt of all yep. their subscribers. Would you pay that for Netflix? I ain't. No, no. chance. I pay four ninety-nine. Yeah, 
and I take and I take the and I take the adverts because the adverts are few and far between. But as soon as they start charging more than that, I'm out. But we did um, years ago, and I would probably need to revisit this topic at some point. But mm. there was there was me and Stu Miller, and I can't I genuinely because it's been so many years. How would we run a film studio? We did a whole podcast episode. We gave everybody homework. So it's like, right, this is going to be the topic next month. Come back with how you would run a film studio. Somebody went, right, Fraser, here's a film studio. And we had all these rules. And I think it was an amazing episode. And I think a lot of it still holds for yeah. nowadays. One of them is I sit down with you. You pitch me faithful. Mm-hmm. I go, do you know what? I'm all right with that. I'm fine. Sounds brilliant. So as long as you stick to what you've said, go make it. Come back when it's finished and we're we're good. Yeah. Not to interfere with you all through the process and keep changing stuff. And that was it was silly little things like that. But there's now the, there's now this rumor that, that they're gonna do a new Spider Man file of Tom Holland and Marvel wanted to be this really grounded street level film, which Spider Man is. He's a, he was a you know, he's your friendly neighborhood Spider Man. Mm-hmm. And that's what the original movies were. And then he got attached to the MCU and he was off to space fighting with Tony Stark and whatever. But this was going to be him and they were going to bring in Daredevil as like a crime fighting partner. And they were going to bring Ant-Man in as a bit of a mentor. Yeah. And it was going to be a uh, Fisk. It was, going to be, it was going to be the Kingpin as the mayor of New York who makes it illegal to be a vigilante. And he was going to send all these super villains against Spider-Man. And a real nice street level spider-man film but because madam webb's bombed sony are like no nah, we want it to be this big multiversal film and we want to get tom we want to get tommy mcguire back and andrew garfield back is it but you've done that already you've done that yeah the yeah. reason that one was so big is because that was different and it was new mm-hmm. it wasn't because oh finally they got toby back it was like it was something different it was clever yeah. so you repeat it again it's not going to work if you want toby back go give toby spider-man four and if you want Andrew Garfield back, go give him Amazing Spider-Man three. Yep. Don't don't put them all. It needs to be. It was like it's like Doctor Who anniversary episodes when there's multi Doctor stories. You can't do that every week. No. Because it takes away it takes away the special. It's like when Strange New Worlds came out and they've got a, an actor playing Kirk, but it's during Pike's time and Kirk before Kirk's on the Enterprise and it's Pike. And it's like, you can, and he, he's only in it an episode here and an episode there. If you have uh, Kirk in every episode, it takes away from Pike. It does. If you have Andrew Garfield in again, Tom McGuire in again, it takes away from Tom. And Tom's done. Like, Tom has done six yeah. Spider Man films, like, and the like, Avengers and his own films. And they pumped out his Spider Man films. There was like two years between each of them. There was no time to breathe and enjoy those movies. They were just out, 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 out. And there's been a little bit of time between the last one and this one. But he wants to go to theatre. He's in Romeo and Juliet. He wants to go to his own. Like, he did a, an Apple TV show where he played this like, serial killer and it was all schizophrenia. Mm. He said by the end of it, he had to like have a proper break because he, he was going a bit crazy. So he wants to go do the arty thing and he wants to go to explore what his paths are, but but he can only do that when he's bankrolled by a Spider-Man film. And I think the thing is, it's like studios nowadays are like, right, we need to spend 200 million on a film. Well, firstly, you don't. <laughs> Just look at Bloomhouse and A24, for God's yeah, sake. Yeah. You don't need to spend that money. You yeah, look at Megan. Like... And we need to spend 200. So if we spend 200, which we've not yet spent on a film we've not yet made, we need to make over a billion in a month. Can we do that? No, we can't, right? We're not doing it then. And it's just this whole forecasting yeah. stuff is is insanely annoying. Yeah, because they forecasted the marbles to flop and then it hit streaming services and lo and behold, it's coming out well. Yeah. And I guarantee you, as messy as Madame Web is, it'll be finding a home. Of course it will. But they'll, they, they'll probably can the Craven film. Do you reckon? Do you reckon that'll go? There's no release date, as far as I know. Yeah. Tax yeah. right off. Uh, Craven, The Hunter, 2024, allegedly. Yeah. Uh, um, apparently it's coming out the 30th of August, but they've not really pushed it. No. So they, they're away building their own universe, but it's not working out for them. But so, 
here here is a question to tie it back into Scottish films as well. I remember I when was, I was about to do that. Anyway. Train Spotting came out in the mid nineties, right, and then went over to America. It was a huge hit in the in the UK and in Scotland, and everybody was like, "Wait, hey, finally, Brit films are back." Blah blah blah. It's weird how a success becomes a British film, but a failure becomes a Scottish film. It's a whole. So Andy Murray's thing. It's a weird thing. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, another victory for Britain. Oh no, Scottish tennis player Andy Murray lost. You know that sort of mental way of thinking. Uh, but then went to America and it was subtitled. <laughs> and I'm like, I mean, I'm like, I don't have an issue understanding anybody. But yeah. how much do you think the accent is causing any issues with Scottish films being made? And that's a genuine question. I, think, well, I, I suppose I, England I, has the same issue with like Liverpool and stuff. I don't think it should be an issue because in any foreign film has subtitles. And they define, like, look at Squid Game when it went out on Netflix. Huge. Huge numbers around the world. Huge. Yeah. And we watched the dub version because we didn't want to watch the subtitles. Because we yeah. didn't want to read it. Yeah. So we watched the dub version. And that wasn't laziness. It was just because Siobhan's a little bit um, dyslexic. So, mm. but I, no, nah, I, I, if, if anyone has beef about that, then they're in the wrong. Because I know Annette always laughs and jokes because I'd been re-watching a lot of the old Rabsy Nesbitt episodes on, uh, on Britbox. When I had Brit Box, and she would walk in, she's like, "Don't understand a word." And I think part of that was in humour because she knows that yeah. Scotland likes to just wind me up and stuff. But you do get some people that struggle with stuff like that. But because we speak fast, yeah. But so do the Germans, like, yeah. And so do the Spanish, like, Australians, yeah, and yeah. the Irish, like yeah, pretty much everybody other than like, well, now, everybody, yeah, other than a lot of America. But so what? There's no there's no there's kind of like a wall there's nowhere for us to go now it's creative scotland they're bust so it's bust and unless i i think i think i've got two routes but i don't think there's i i don't think there is a specific route for you as a filmmaker or a writer or director or actor or whatever in scotland because there's there's nothing in there's, there's two shows in scotland that you can work on it's outlander which is a closed door, and River City, which is always screwed up, right? Mm-hmm. I've been asked, I've not been asked, I asked if I could submit something to River City to write on it, and they said, yeah, come back in May, so I will. But that's May. Yeah. <laughs> but fine. That's your two. So, I, think the, I think the only solution, and it's really sad to hear that you, that is, oh well, yeah, there's the, the funding thing, I suppose. But it's like, the sad thing is the crew problem that you mentioned you were having. So in an ideal world, you would write a script and you go, this is a good script. I now need a crew to make it. Mm -hmm. You'd think that there was a lot of crew who would be enthusiastic about, well, do you know what? I'm not working at the minute. So the fact that the Fraser's offering a role for the minimum wage, I'll take it because then I'll be involved with this thing. And then you could get your thing made and then you sell it to somebody like Netflix or or um, video on demand or something. But the shortage of crew is quite saddening that they're not there. But, e- but even on a, on a broadcast level, they're struggling for crew. So it's not just the indie film scene that's struggling for crew. We're all struggling. Everybody. We're struggling for crew and actors, really. And um, I, I think my route is one of two, and that's get an American agent and start pitching me on CW shows genre shows, quantum leaps, you you mm. I think I think they're about to do a, announce a Brandon Routh Superman show. I've seen rumblings of that, but unfortunately Rumbling. on social media you never know whether it's genuine or not nowadays. It's very there's, annoying. There's rumblings. So I, I choose to believe it. But I could I should have wrote on the flash, right? When that was a thing. And Supergirl or whatever. That should have been my time. But I think there's that route. But trying to get an American agent is harder than trying to get a UK agent. And I dumped my agent in January and I've not looked for a new agent since. Yeah. Because at the moment, I don't see the point. And then, because I'm getting pitching opportunities without them anyway. Or, <laughs> so someone, someone in LinkedIn is like back and faithful, to like personally, not money wise, but they're like, they're a Scottish person in America who has all these ties about promoting Scotland in America. And the post was something like, if it wasn't uh, exciting enough that the DCU, they put some brackets, 
uh, DC Comic Universe, uh, like or whatever DC stands for. Like, uh, what does DC stand for? I I used to know that D- something comics, isn't it? Because obviously DC Comics is like. Um, I used to, I did used to know that. No, I can't get an answer. <laughs> no, I can't get it. Hang on, what does DC stand for? Somebody be shouting at the uh, at the screen. What does DC stand for? There we go. Uh, District of Columbia. No, not that one. Right. Uh, Detective, Detective Comics. Comics. Right. So, so when people call it DC Comics, Comics they're wrong because they're saying comics twice. So it should exactly. be just DC. So the, so, the, so, the, so the DCU and the MCU, and some have said, but more excitingly, we're about to get the SGU, which is the Scottish Gaelic Universe. And I just went. Yeah, definitely. Hell yeah. Thank you, Steve Buchanan. Um, yeah. So. And that's what I'm planning. You know, I've got Origins of the Layout as a book, comic, prequel, animated series, live action series, spin off movies, board games, video games, toys, clothes, merch, booze, shortbread. It's all there. <laughs> Faithful, Kill uh, uh, She, the documentary about Scottish Fairy Tales. Faithful, the short film about Scottish Fairy Tale. So, and I am building a community of writers to, to lead that. But we need the Russell T. Davises, the Stephen Moffats. Uh, oh, Stephen Moffat is Scottish, right? But we need the right people who can walk up something like that into a room somewhere and they go, oh, why have we not thought about this? But and do you not think there's the possibility of you being that person in five years' time, for example? In five years, yeah, but I would need to be mentored by somebody who's already doing it. So I know how right. to properly because if i knew how to do it properly i wouldn't be looking for someone to do it for me but so my question is again is you you know more how to do it properly now than you did five or ten years ago but i'm still not enough right and i've, and I've been told non-stop by the right people that i alone is i'm not enough i get a little bit of fervor but david moon attached to my name yeah and this Hollywood producer said that Creative Scotland will take me more seriously with him attached to their project. But he's now mentioned a competitive aspect to it. Like, he's like, I can't just give it to you. And I was like, okay, get that. Oh, and I heard that, yeah. my brain switched off. My mm-hmm. heart out of it. And I was like, okay, you know what? I'm not going to rely on this. Don't make me beg for treats. Yeah, you know, not, that sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, if you, if you want this package deal ready to go, take it. I'm not fighting for it. Yeah. So, Give me the space or don't. Yeah. And it, it's up to him what he wants to do. And that and the thing is that's a good mindset to be in because maybe ten years ago you would have been like, okay, I'll fight for it. I'll beg for well, treats. Years so ago, I'll, I'll, years I'll, I'll you know I'll put my paw up and stuff. Yeah, now you're like, no, you know your value now. Yeah. Is that, you I know, know that you know what you're doing. Therefore, also, you don't have to beg or put a paw up. Yeah, I know the value of the IP. Mm. But somebody here me or somebody or me and somebody or me and a lot of somebody's we need to create the industry here again and there needs to be a tv show that's running nine months out of the year so people are working nine months out of the year but one's not enough no there needs to be a spin-off or an animated or a film so but one one is more than none one starts it one starts it yeah but one TV show does not give everyone work. No. And it doesn't have to give everyone work because that's just not feasible. But but at the moment, there's no work. So there needs to be one big TV show that's tra- that, that's employing people whilst also training people. Yeah. And then people move on to the next thing. But at the moment, we've got Hee Haw and we used to be doing better. We had Tiger, we had... Uh, like all the comedies up here that's still game and Burniston and and uh, Tune the Fat and we had uh, Tagger and we had you know Take the High Road and all that sort of stuff but they're all gone and nobody's replaced them nothing's replaced it it's just gone it wouldn't it be interesting to and obviously it's not feasible that you're able to do this but wouldn't it be interesting to go do you know what I'm gonna take the set of credits from Take the High Road just at the end of one episode and go, where is everybody? Mm-hmm. What country are they in? Dead. And I think, yeah, I think you'll probably find that a lot of them are 
just they've, they've moved abroad or yeah. they're not working anymore or something like that. It's a shame. So I don't, I don't like you've got great films behind you, and you've got how many films you got on your list? I've got I got quite a lot because it just kept going. So I'm I'm going to go and you tell me how many of these you've seen. Um, I couldn't come up with a top ten, so right. it's just like that. I would struggle on that. Sixteen years of alcohol. Nope. I know. Uh, yeah. Whiskey Galore from 1949. So Scottish films go way back. Restless Natives, Train Spotting One and Two, Gregory's Girl, Ned's Orphans, The Wicker Man, Local Hero. The only film I ever walked out of the cinema at. didn't like it. I was 11. For, you know. Sue me. I was more into Indiana Jones. I've seen it since. It's a great film. Uh, Shallow Grave, Rob Roy, Braveheart, Robert Bruce. ED, which is amazing. Sheila Hancock film. If you've not seen that, it's really, really good. Sweet 16, The Wee Man. Filth, Being Human, starring Robin Williams. Small Faces, The Angel Share, Greyfriars Bobby from 1961, Rat Catcher, The Debt Collector, My Name is Joe, and A Sense of Freedom. So that was my good list. So there is, there is a pretty good list, that. Yep. Not bad at all. Yep. You missed the decoy bride. Yeah, not saying that one. Yeah, so that's David Tennant. Oh, okay. And it's a fun comedy uh, mm. with Kelly McDonald from Trainspotting. She's amazing, is Kelly McDonald. Yep. She's one of those that it's like, um, she's one of those I'd sit down with and go, let's just have a chat. She's awesome, is Kelly McDonald. Uh, she was in the running for a film that may or may not be faithful. <laughs> Ooh, she's awesome. It's Kelly McDonald, you're like, yeah, you're in. Next as long as you say yes. <laughs> didn't get her. Um, so, yeah, that's a good film. Sunshine and Leaf's a great film. Uh, I need to watch Hannah and the Apocalypse at some point. Yeah, Rob loves it. Rob thinks it's amazing, but I'm a bit iffy with musicals. So yeah, it's fair. I, need yeah, to be in, I need to be in the mood for that. It's not for you. Um, so, yeah, then, yeah, like... But that, but you know, you 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 reamed off a list of films that went back to like nineteen forty nine, and you read off like 12, 20 films. Yeah. Since nineteen forty nine. I'm sure there are more, but it was like but those not, are the main ones. So but, I need it. But not much. No, not much. No. I, it's a, and and this podcast will genuinely end on a downbeat because there's no, I there's just there's no lust for for creative talent here. And I nearly had a panic attack a good few years ago when I was at one of these networking events, one of these session things, and it was Channel 4. And I'm like, oh, we're always looking for new talent and we're always looking for new ideas. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I nearly stood up and went, liar, <laughs> you liar. I mean, that's the thing. It's, this is like, so we did a podcast episode for your show. So uh, but this is my one, so I could swear on this one. Um, is Mine as well. <laughs> is you know it's like I'm a I was a kid who left school early, never sat any exams. I have no qualifications to my name because of life circumstances. I I don't sit on a shit ton of money, but yeah, I have met some of the coolest filmmakers in the world. I've travelled to San Diego Comic Con. I've shot little documentaries. I've got a podcast that's over a decade, and I've. To all these, oh, well, you need to net fuck off, basically. It's like sometimes there is a way to just go, do you know what? If you lot won't help me, I now need to work out how to do it on my own. And that's exactly what you're doing and what you have been doing yeah. for, for the decade. Cops and Monsters, solely crowdfunded. You found the cast, you put the, the cast together, yeah, we all hard. that sort of stuff. You're doing it with Faithful. You're raising the budget for that. Yeah, These creative business suits that are like oh well, actually we'd, we'd only support scottish pro projects well this is one where technically you've got someone who delivered coffee who was from wales so you're not included and all that bullshit so it's like you've just got to work out how to not bother with these morons that that can't do the thing that their job is supposed to be and you are doing that and i get it it's frustrating somewhat, now but somewhat limited success it's harder. I, I, this has been the hardest one. I think once, I think once we sit, once we sit down in March and we get the lights up, when we get the actors in and they're all in the costume and we start running the lines and whatnot. Once, once we get all that, once we get going, it'll be absolutely fine. But getting this up to the amount of money we need for two days is quite hard. But, but each time we've set out a campaign, we've raised a good amount of money. But you got your two days. You remember when we did that campaign for like a week? Yep. And in 24 hours, you'd hit your target. 
yeah. for that initial target and then it's yeah, the stretch yeah. goals. But yeah. I don't think it'll ever get any easier. No. Or any less stressful. But no. you you're doing it and you've hit targets and you've got two days worth of funding. Yeah. You've you've got a day worth of funding to find. Yeah, and we're getting there. We're and you'll get there. We're up to 8.50 and I think once we get on set and I start taking photos and videos, I think more money will come in. Because that happened when we did the Cops and Monsters pilot. We didn't have all the money we needed for the time to start shooting. And we were uploading, and that was back in 2014, before the age of social media. Mm -hmm. So I think once we get on there and we start sharing those photos and the videos, I think that money will come pouring. Not pouring in, but I think it'll just in. Yeah, it'll trickle in into a nice pile that will enable you to actually finish what you've started doing. Professional photos done by a photographer out and once we get some footage out then I think I think we'll get more money. Yeah and then you can look at what you've done and look genuinely look at what you've already done and that's not been with the help of these creative organizations that are supposed to help creative people that's off your own blood sweat and many tears. I don't like doing it this way. (laughs) No (laughs) good no not at all no. Because it's incredibly stressful to go, I am solely responsible for everybody working on this film getting paid yep. in order for this film that I wrote to get made, where Short Circuit should have given me 20 grand, yeah, or the BFI should have given me 15 grand, or like Creative Scotland, the first time round when we did the Kickstarter, looking for 16 and a half, they pledged a grand and then we didn't hit the goal, so we lost the grand. And then when I started running the next campaign for a week, or I think it was 10 days, and I said, right, I've, I've applied for the, for the money again, and they've just ignored it ever since. But I still think in five years' time, we'll be having a conversation. You'll be like, I've got to go, got to go, i got a meeting. And you'll be, you could well be the the Or I'll be off on the school the run. Person. Or I'll yeah, be possibly off. off on the school run. Yeah, but you could, you are, I think you are the person <laughs> to recover well, the industry. Yeah, and Judd, my Australian producer, says he wants to get me into a position where I'm the one that people put their name down on in the Creative Scotland application forms to get money. Yeah. And I can see that, but I, would, I wouldn't I would want you to sit there now and go, yes, that is me. No. Because I think that cause that'll take any fuel of the next five years out of you. Oh, like, oh yes, that's me and, in five years. I do believe that Judd one day will email me and say, I've made a deal with CCA, got a pocket full of money, we're going to go to the animated, or we're going to go to Origins, or we're going to go to Fergus, the feature film. Yeah. Or I believe that the, the Hollywood guy might also say, right, I've got the money I need for the thing, we're going to go get Origins into development. I believe either of those things could happen, but I'm not relying on it. No, not that, at all. That's not my only, that's, what, that's why I'm making faithful, because rather than sit going, any minute now, a film's going to get made. Yeah. I'm, I'm making it. Yeah. And my phone has been buzzing non-stop. So I've got nine notifications from my high-up team. Uh, yeah, so just message, message, message from a director. Uh, well, that's good. That means you've got a whole bunch of stuff to keep you going for the rest of the afternoon. No, I've got a meeting in an hour. Oh, uh, no. I've got busy, busy, busy. I've got a guy making our dog, fairy dog leaf coat. Nice, yep. Uh, for not a lot of money, because he just wants to do it. Yeah. Um, so he's making our fairy leaf coat. See, that's the difference. You've got the guy making the dog there who's doing it for not a lot of money because he just wants to do it. He will go further than those people sitting going, well, actually, that money's not enough for me. I want more. Yeah. Those people are sitting there going, actually, I want more money than that. They're still going to be sitting there in the next two, three years oh, doing yeah. exactly the same. Whereas your genius making the dog will be off making. Yeah. They'll be working with Henson or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he and he's he's so he's younger than me because they all are, and he came out of uni, and now and he just makes stuff, and it's great stuff, miniatures and effects and all that sort of stuff. He's a one man filmmaking machine. He's he's more talented than I ever will, will ever be. Well, what's his name then? Because you haven't mentioned his name. Joe Osborne. There you go. Joe Osborne, you're awesome. Keep making dogs and, and he runs cool creatures. Film. I'm going to send you, he's done a film called, a short film called Seaweed Shrapnel mm-hmm. as part of his uni film course. And then he's just done a second one, which I've not watched yet. I'll send you the link yeah. to Seaweed Shrapnel. Get, get Joe on your podcast. Mm. 
Because okay, me, me, you, and Joe on the podcast. Yeah, we can old chat. I'm looking forward to that. Would you? I mean, obviously, if you're making films, it's not easy to find time. But you know, by all means, bring some of your cast and crew on when Faithful's a thing. And when Faithful, yeah, when Faithful's getting made, I will I will do a podcast with as many of the people who will want to do it. Lucy will come on, absolutely, because yeah. you know she's a woman director. She's a rare thing. Yeah. Uh, do you want to hear a horrible statistic about the Oscars? Oh yes, <laughs> go on. This will be the downbeat ending, will it? <laughs> uh, so, uh, how many women directors have won an Oscar? This will this will blow your mind. It's right? like two, isn't there, or something? Uh, I believe it is three. So I know Catherine Bigelow. Uh huh. Um, who's the yeah. other two? Uh, Zeo and Champion. Okay. I feel like Catherine Hepburn as well. Right. So. I mean, that's a whole other thing. It's like how many were nominated? How many? How many um, women directors are there making major films compared to the? So it's a whole different crazy wormhole, isn't it? But. Yeah, it's it's actually horrible. The, yeah. you, the inclusion list has it. So it was Lena Wertmeyer in 77. Um, it's got to be now. What's that? Is. Best actress in a supporting role. So, yeah. So the women nominated for Best Director were Lena Wertmeyer in 77, Jane Champion 1994 2022, Sophia Coppola 2004, Catherine Bigelow 2010, Greta Gerberg 2018, Chloe Zhao in 2021. And Emerald Fennel in 2021, and only three women have won it. That's crazy. So that's that's where we're up to. So it's so that's why I want to champion Lucy as much as possible. Yeah. But yeah, that's so true. yeah, we did. So, so what's the final sentence that we don't have to end on that terrible statistic? Uh, um, I okay. enjoyed the BAFTAs. I thought Samantha Morton's speech was amazing. Apparently. It all wasn't televised, though, from what I'm hearing. There was she oh, went off on a bit of a rant about funding, and yeah. uh, apparently it wasn't all shown on TV. So that'll she be says, interesting. She says the government have to fund films; they have to invest in the future of film in the UK, and they didn't broadcast it. Yeah, that's horrendous, isn't it? <laughs> Michael J. Fox was a highlight. He was. Yeah. Uh, did you see there was a stage invader? Yeah, I did, but it wasn't on the TV broadcast. It was. Uh, no, I saw it on iPlayer. Did you write? Okay. So when when um, Oppenheimer won Best Film, yeah. there was a young black lad standing at the back, and yeah. he wasn't part of the film. He was a prankster. Was oh the guy? So there was three of them. Uh, was yeah. Oh my god! Because Annette said to me, she's like, "Who's he?" I'm like, "He must be one of the producers." A really young producer. And he was a stage invader. Mm-hmm. He was. Oh a prank. wow! He's he's a, didn't, he didn't a, do anything. Or he just stood there, didn't he? Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> He's oh a, my God, that's he's horrendous! A social media, he's a social media prankster. Surely you should go to jail for that. I don't know what the crime would be, but it's like you don't want to encourage that stuff, do you? Next thing no. you know, next thing you know, actors are running on stage slapping other actors in front of. Oh yeah, no, that was last year, wasn't it? That's been uh, done. What film is what Scottish film is coming out in twenty twenty four? What's coming out? What have we got? Hopefully something. No results found. Uh, there's a TV movie called A Scottish Love Scheme. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably another remake of Greyfriars Bobby at some point. Because uh, even the Glasgow Film Festival weren't showing a lot of Scottish films. Of course they're not. Because there aren't any. Could, I, would, I would have to go back and show Night's Day, the 10th anniversary. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Cops and Monsters Blu ray that's still sitting in your house, so you could run that. No, because it's going out the post. Tomorrow. It's going out the post. It's going to arrive with me and end down, end up on the shelf by uh, um, yeah, you know, the next few days. To, there needs to be more Scottish support. There yeah. needs to be more UK support. It's not it's not just a Scottish issue, but it's slightly worse here hmm. because all the production companies are getting money in England and Ireland are having a really good time, especially with animation. They're like running away with it. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of people in Scotland who want to make stuff, but we're not connecting with the people that can get it made. And 
very few projects are going from pre-production to out into the world. Well, that's why they should get in touch with me and you. Yeah. So we can start a studio. I know yep. you've already got one. You've got Silly Wee Films, but we started it's, another one. It's just Sorry. the best behind me. But yeah, yeah I mean, it could, get, it could get better. I'm, I've, I've certainly got plans that, and I refuse to give up. So, and I turn 40 in a couple of weeks. So I've been at this since I was 21. Don't like, give up. Oh, God, no. If you give up, what are you going to do? Go work in a warehouse or an office what, or something. Yeah, it's like... Yeah, literally, what am I going to do? Yeah. Um. So, no, no, no. Sack, sack that for a game of uh, soldiers. But yes, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Um, you too. Uh, another, another lovely wee rant. Um, stop recording whenever you want and we'll say goodbye properly. Brilliant. But yeah, um, and so you've got a coffee account, haven't you? I where, do. Where can people Fraser, find your coffee account? Fraser, Fraser writes, as in writing, um, on coffee. That's it. They can chuck in some money. At the moment, I've got one set up to help me do more faithful stuff. So, and then uh, I've I've got a coffee account, and I keep forgetting to mention it on any podcast. Uh, the front page of the screen, it's that's everywhere. And I think I'm going to take your advice and try and raise some money so I can get down to see this Maggie's Little Helpers um, thing. Because not only will it get me a huge pile of signed stuff. I'm hoping I can bag a load of interviews, but also any money that you give me to give to Maggie's help us to get me the signed autographs yes. goes into a cancer research charity as well. So give so, me money so I can give it to charity. So if they, don't, so if they don't give you money, they're, they're dicks. If they don't, they just don't care about humanity. Yeah. They're just are horrible, nasty people. So that's on them. So it's but, like June or something, I think. But yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Coffee from page to screen, uh, that's mine. So yeah. I will now stop recording and then we can just say goodbye, probably. You know, say goodbye, probably.